first order of business. <laughs> this is just so good. <laughs> right <laughs> um I'm slightly off center because I'm gonna be holding things up over here but um hello everybody <laughs> it's Ted the Buffalo Beauty Boy and welcome um I notoriously have done pretty like extensive empties videos once a month um and my empties this month were pitiful um I really had like maybe four things like I don't not a whole lot so I think I'm gonna save those for next month and just kind of wait until I have a sizable empties collection but um today I'm gonna share some favorites so I've got a few uh, I mean I've got a bunch of beauty things but I'm also gonna talk about some other just like regular life things um as well and I feel like everybody's got fun names for these and of course I want to like say like stuff that's giving me serotonin or like like general favorites um I'll come up with like a plucky title um let me know what you would call one of these videos besides just like a general favorites because I feel like favorites it, it's a weird concept to me because when we're purchasing things right you go to the store and you have your selection of whatever, so you pick your favorite. So in essence, like everything that I own is a favorite because be because I chose it, I picked that. So like, okay, um, of the, I'm trying to like grab something without like giving it away. So you know what I mean? Like if I'm, okay, so I wanna buy a new cleanser. So I go to Target. So I choose like, okay, a cleanser at Target and I pick up, the La Roche-Posay because I'm like okay this is my favorite of the $15 cleansers at Target so yeah like that's a favorite cleanser of mine but it's not what I'm showing you does that make sense am I rambling I mean I'm definitely rambling but um yeah just like this these are the things that I'm really enjoying using the things that I kind of smile every time I pick it up the things that I gravitate towards from my collection because of a collection of things that I own is my favorite of those choices, right? So I guess these are things that are making me smile in the midst of a pandemic and that means a lot. The first one that maybe is, like I, I don't have it with me but I'm wearing it, um, eyeliner. I have never historically been an eyeliner person but I'm having fun with wearing eyeliner. So I guess eyeliner constitutes a favorite probably the most important favorite of mine and I've saved it to I guess like show it off a little not show it off but um I am fully vaccinated I'm two weeks out from my inoculation which means that I am fully vaccinated I've built antibodies because you are not fully vaccinated until two weeks after your second dose of the Pfizer vaccine which is what I have and I'm from New York um so they were giving out these little stickers and I haven't had an excuse to wear it yet. So I am so thankful and gracious to be vaccinated. Um, I got to spend a fairly normal Easter with my family because of that. Um, and now my boyfriend is fully vaccinated. My mother is, my father is. I'm just so, so tremendously grateful that my family is vaccinated and my friends are vaccinated mostly. Um, it really does seem like a light at the end of a t at the end of the tunnel. So, um, I, without getting too like emotional because I, there was a lot of emotion behind getting vaccinated. Um, the first after the first one, the first one was it was such a weird feeling because it finally was like I'm on track to this. Um, and I have a lot of just personal feelings about what that means for me and the place that I'm in. But I got my first dose um, on a, like I was on the list to, like if they had a cancellation or something, I would be called. So I got the call to go in and get vaccinated at like 6.30 at night, seven o'clock. And I drove there 
and I, you know, received my first dose. I got in my car and it was just like, whew, like waterworks. I took the long way, like driving home through back roads. Um, cause I was just sobbing the entire time for everything and nothing. And I just really felt so, it was like every emotion that I've been holding in for the last year, um, was finally coming to the surface because I was vaccinated. Um, I mean, it didn't help that I like was listening to certain music. Um, but yeah, I just really, it was emotional. So I'm really proud and happy to wear my New York vaccinated sticker with you all. So, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's like as much emotion as I'm going to show today. We're stone faced for the rest of it. Um, no, I'm just kidding, but I'm going to share some favorites. I'm actually missing a couple. So I'm going to grab those. My next favorite is little baby Sophia sleeping in the corner like a queen. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right. So I think that I've really been loving. I, we, we buy them constantly. Obviously, La Croix seltzer. I feel like I start most of my videos like cracking open a seltzer. Um, but specifically, the limoncello flavor is divine. My boyfriend isn't super obsessed with it, but I really enjoy it. It tastes like lemon pound cake or like the Starbucks like lemon loaf. It's like vanilla lemon deliciousness. So um, La Croix limoncello. We love her in this house. And I feel like the second beverage that's been bringing me joy, making me feel nice, keeping me sane in the time of Corona, um, the GTS Spring Bloom Kombucha. And it is elderflower, violet, and jasmine. And these are so good. Um, I'm trying not to drink soda a lot. Um, it's like the plight of adulthood, I feel like, is like you stop drinking soda and you stop like eating bagels a lot. I don't know, whatever. So I typically will start my day with like half of a bottle of kombucha like three times a week. Um, and that is hands down my favorite one. So I buy it like two or three at a time when I go to the grocery store. Um, I think that's all of the like consumables, I guess. No, you know what? Actually... I don't, it's, again, it's not like a thing, it's a channel, but there is a creator named Julie Pacino. Um, I have it written down because I, I'm a horrible with pronunciation, but she is so cute. Um, she is a YouTuber and I, you know, a young mom, she's got a, I think like a, like one and a half year old, um, and her husband and she does like quick meals. She does like dump and go crock pot, one pan meals, like sheet pan meals. And I've made like four or five of her recipes. So I will link her channel. She is an absolute delight. She doesn't know me. I don't know her. Like I, you know, I just kind of stumbled upon her channel and I've been really enjoying. It's almost like, like ASMR or like cathartic. Like I'll just watch like her videos of her like cooking and it, they're like little blurbs but um and then I'll just like write down the recipe or link or like click the link that she provides and I've made like three of her recipes I made this like hash brown breakfast casserole I made this like creamy chicken over rice um we did a um chuck roast in the crock pot and we like pulled it and made subs her recipes are incredible so I'll link her below and now I think that's everything food related so I think because I do have a couple like regular life things, we'll do like food, face, body, life. Yeah, that's a food, face, body, life, honey. You know, <laughs> that's like the Buffalo Beauty Boy way. Um, so yeah, we'll get into some beauty. I have three that are hair related. And one of them is these little barrettes. They're just so fun. I was like watching videos and thinking about stuff that I want to create and content. And I was like, I need some colorful, fun little barrettes. So I found this um, Scunzi, um pack and it was like six bucks. 
and it, they're just fun. Like, this is fun. This is amazing. I'm having a great time. This is making me smile in the midst of a pandemic. Who would have thought? Little glittery, colorful barrettes. Um, so these are wonderful. I got them at Target. And the next, like, hair utensil, hair item, um, these slip silk scrunchies. This is a fresh one. Um, they come in packs of, I think, three or six, and I got them at the Sephora sale. So if you missed it, next time would be a great time to grab them. They come in, I buy the three packs, and I've bought this exact same three pack twice. So it's a black one, I think like a beige one, and then a cheetah print one. And I sleep with my hair like in a ponytail on the top of my head with one of these. Um, and they're great. They don't snag your hair. They don't add, like give it that um, crease or anything like that. So the slip silk mini scrunchies, I love them. I recommend them to my clients all the time. And I say, listen, I know that it's like $20 for three scrunchies, like that's a lot, but they're real silk. So if you're somebody that does wear your hair up a lot or sleep with your hair up, if you get them, definitely like, they're like precious treasure. Like I wouldn't just kind of leave them all over the place. I have like one in my skincare drawer one at my like vanity setup and then I think two on my nightstand like in this little like tray that I have so yeah they're expensive but they are wonderful um hair ties if you're looking I guess and the next hair product or item yeah it's a product but the um Chris Appleton and Color Wow money mask this is a wonderful hair mask. I've only used it once, so I can't really like, I'm not like putting everything that I have behind it, but it's this beautiful blue color and the packaging, um, it says to not leave the packaging in your shower. So I would imagine like the iridescent reflection might like chip off or something like that. But the hair mask is great. Um, this is kind of pricey. I picked it up during the Sephora sale. But Chris Appleton, if you don't know, he is responsible for Kim Kardashian's hair, Ariana Grande's hair, any like really plush celebrity hair he does. And he's known for his glass hair, um, keeping it really shiny, really plush, expensive looking money, hence the money mask. So this... Um, is what I call a beautifying mask. So I mentioned before the way that I kind of think about hair masks is, sorry, I was looking at like a car. Um, <laughs> there's kind of, in my opinion, three types of hair masks um, that you would use. So the first one is something really high tech, really repairing, really restoring. That's like an Olaplex mask or something like that. The second one is something really natural and buttery, something, you know, more kind of twigs and berries, very like moisturizing but more so like healing for the hair without a ton of technology so those would be like something like Shea Moisture or something in that world and those I like because you can just like scoop them and goop them and brush through your hair and they're great and then these ones are what I call beautifying masks so this does have a lot of claims um about like the antioxidants and plant-based proteins and whatnot um and I believe that this is silicone free. No, it's not. It's got dimethicone. Um, I'm not here to delve into that, but beautifying hair masks, in my opinion, kind of do a little bit of both. So they're going to provide a ton of slip. You can detangle. Um, they're good for the hair, but they really shine when you shine literally and figuratively when you're going to be styling your hair. So if you're going to blow dry or air dry and then apply heat, like you want to have some sort of heated mechanism in your hair after one of these because they really smooth the cuticle. They add a ton of shine. And this is probably my favorite of those types of products that I've tried. Um, this claims to give your hair a ton of shine, um, help repair. I can read it. It says, Money Mask is your regs to riches texture solution. This deep hydrating treatment, rich in Mediterranean plant-based proteins, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals, helps deliver super glossy, supple, expensive looking hair. And it does that. And it claims to do so for three shampoos. I've used this once and I blow dried and curled my hair and then I had I have washed my hair I think four times since then so I'm probably due to like reuse this but I just haven't planned on heat styling my hair and had a chance to yet but wonderful beautiful 
product if you're looking. And the last hair product that I'm gonna talk about is the Cult and King Tonic. And this is the mini size. I purchased this in a trial set and then I also bought like the refill and I've refilled this three times. So I'm on my third one of these and I love it. This is my first step out of the shower. I spray my scalp and my hair and then I use my leave-in and whatnot, but this is minty and aromatic. It's really great for the hair. I believe the like main ingredient is banana leaf juice, so it's not just water, but I find that it just really helps keep my hair happy and it keeps my scalp feeling amazing which is so important. So um, yeah, the Carlton King Tonic is a wonderful product that I've been really enjoying using for the last few months, but I figured it was time to really give it its due time in front of the camera. The next product that I'm gonna talk about is a fragrance and that is Boy Smells Violet Ends. Is it gonna focus? Yeah. So, this smells, I feel like everybody says they're really bad at describing fragrances and I don't think that I am, but when I'm in front of the camera, it's like a thing happens and I suddenly become bad at describing fragrances. So this is like a green, lush, but also kind of smoky fragrance and it is heavily violet. So I love violet. Um, I know it's kind of a polarizing scent and flavor. I, I have a violet syrup on our bar um, if I'm out and about. Um, there's specifically one cafe that I'm thinking of that does a violet Italian soda. I have the violet candy like mints in my bag. Like I just really love violet. So I was immediately drawn to this when it was when I found out that it was a violet forward fragrance and I bought the sample set which came with like a voucher for the cost of the set off of one of the fragrances. And it was the first one that I tried and I fell in love. It smells like, mm. I feel like it, I wanna say a beautiful man, um, but their whole entire thing is that they're like gender, not like non-gendered fragrances, but this is masculine, but in a very beautiful, soft way. Does that make sense? And I've really been enjoying wearing it. I actually, when they, when they, when you purchase it, they send you a couple of the trial sizes of the same fragrance to make sure that you really like it. Because once you open the box, it can't be returned. I knew I loved it, so I actually brought the samples into my salon, and my coworker took it and texted me a couple days later and was like, "Whoa, this is amazing!" And I was like, "I know." So, Boy Smells Violet Ends is incredible. The next skincare product, or yeah, we're going to delve into skin, um, is the Super Goop Glow Screen. I, there's been a lot of talk about sunscreen lately. Um, I wear sunscreen almost every day. I think that sunscreen is the most important thing. If you pay attention or, you know, whatnot, scientifically proven anti-aging ingredients that are recognized by the FDA I, last time I read, please do not take anything I say as gospel. Last time I read, the only two ingredients that are actively proven to be anti-aging are retinol and sunscreen. So I use both res responsibly in my skincare routine. And this is divine. Um, I went through several tubes of the unseen sunscreen and then everybody's just been raving about this. So I picked it up and I have been loving it ever since. The next skincare product that I'm going to talk about is the Glossier Future Dew. And you can kind of see I've used quite a bit of this. And this was such a weird product. I bought it when it first came out. So I've been like babysitting this for a little while. Um, but it's just so nice. It took me forever to figure out how to use it. But I use it as a primer. Um, I'll use it as like kind of like a skincare snack, which they like talked Glossier, like said that term. I didn't just like make that up. But if I like get home from work and I take my mask off and I'm just feeling kind of like, ugh, like depleted, I'll take a pump or two of this and just kind of put it on my face in between like my morning skincare routine and my nighttime skincare routine. Um, or I'll use this 
as a primer. I've been mixing it with a foundation. I just like it. I feel like it's like the perfect little like serum to have in my routine to just like mix with other things. Does that make sense? The next thing that I have been loving using, and it kind of took me, I'm not gonna say took me by surprise, um, but the Good Light Cosmic Dew Water Cleanser. Yes. This is a gel cleanser that gets really foamy and bubbly, which I historically have never loved, but this is so gentle. And um, David Yi, the f a founder of Good Light and Very Good Light, um, talking about this. And they said that it's really supposed to be like just a super gentle cleanser. Not everything foaming is going to be irritating. And I am guilty of thinking anything foamy is going to just destroy my moisture barrier. And this does not. So um, this was gifted to me by David and Good Light. I was part of the launch. Um, they messaged a few of us, you know, creators and wanted to talk about what Good Light meant to us and just really I just I I speak so warmly of Very Good Light and David and their message and creating a positive space for men and masculine people in the beauty industry and then Good Light specifically is so inclusive and they only have three products but all of them are wonderful but I had to give shout out to this cleanser specifically. It's been living in my shower and I've been absolutely loving it and again that was gifted but I would hands down repurchase in a minute. So um, the next product that I'm going to share is um, the Booney Dune cleansing capsules. And it kind of it looks, it looks kind of cool, right? Um, Booney Dune is an all sustainable, zero waste product. And they are these capsules that are cleanser. And they come in this little jar and it's like a pill and you kind of break it open and the powder is the cleanser and the casing is made from tapioca so they completely dissolve. I actually like, I just put them in the garbage and it's fine um, because it is tapioca based so it's gonna biodegrade and dissolve but I actually kind of played with one underneath the water. Oh, the baby woke up. Um, And it did start to get kind of jelly and dissolve. So these are very pricey. Um but a wonderful treat. I use this, like if I'm doing a full like at home facial, this will be my second cleanse with that. And I kind of leave it on for a couple minutes. Um, but Pooja, the founder is incredible. Um, I was featured on their Imperfectly Sustainable campaign on their Instagram. And I did purchase these with my own money because I really wanted to support them. And I'm thankful that I did. This is a beautiful product to have. Not something that I feel like I would use every day just because it is very pricey. But um, for when you want to really treat yourself and really pamper your skin, it's a wonderful product to have. And it's really, every time I use it, I just immediately feel like I'm doing something good. I'm using something good and my skin loves it. Speaking of loving a product and a brand and everything, um, this is the Stark Aurora Cleanse and Hydrate Balm. And Stark is a wonderful Canadian company owned by a woman named Jess. And she's so friendly. She and I chat on Instagram quite a bit. She sent over three of her products and I've used them all. I really enjoy them. I'm going to be doing a dedicated post to Stark, but I really want to do them justice. Um, she's so cool. All of these products are handmade. Um, and this is a like cleansing balm. It's a cleansing balm, but it's also, you can leave it on. I think it's too beautiful to wash down the drain. So I use this as my last step after any like resurfacing serum or any acid treatment or anything really, you know, any active on my skin, I will slather this on at night and oh my gosh, my skin loves it. I've been using it for about a month and you can see I've barely dented that surface. Um, but these are incredible. Um, I'll have everything linked down below. It's pumpkin and blood orange. 
is the scent, but I don't think it's like actual fragrance. I think it's just the smell of the ingredients. <sighs> They're incredible. Um, Jess talks a lot about being a formulator and using natural ingredients, but also using scientifically proven ingredients. I've been had a lot of feelings about clean beauty and what it means, and then also like fear mongering onto people purchasing clean beauty and feeling like bullied into using clean beauty. And it just makes people, that's a very ugly way to be in the beauty world. And Jess posts about not doing that. Um, very cool. Just a wonderful brand that I'm very happy to be in contact with and support. Um, and I've had these products for a little while, but I thought it was definitely time to share one. And this is amazing. If you do want to use it as a cleanser, it takes everything off. Um, I'll use it like around my eyes if I have on. I'll probably use it today actually because I've got some glitter and some mascara on, but such a beautiful product that I'm so happy to share with everybody. All right, we're getting there. Um, I've got a couple more beauty products and then I'll switch over to like some life kind of general faves. So the next beauty product, if you like know me personally or pay extensive attention to my stories um this won't be a surprise but it is the ColourPop and Lizzie McGuire What Dreams Are Made Of palette and uh, I've used it a few times um I'm not even gonna say that it's like the palette itself that's bringing me joy although the palette is um I just love Lizzie McGuire I love ColourPop and I think this, like, aside from the Sailor Moon collab, this really called to me in a way that just was like, ugh, you know, everything sucks. Like, everything's really hard. Everything's really weird. We're going through a lot. It's like little piece of Lizzie McGuire, like, fun hanging out in my makeup bag. So um, if you are somebody who's really into affordable makeup, ColourPop is a wonderful brand to check out. If you're looking for a little dose of nostalgia, and you love Lizzie McGuire or Hilary Duff the way that I do, this has been a fun one. Um, yeah, I can show you the shades. Just really interesting. Like this is definitely a palette that does not mimic anything that I really have in my collection. I've played mostly with these two, but if you cover those and maybe cover like these, it's a very neutral wearable palette. So it seemed like it was a smart investment, especially because the pops of color were ones that I don't have in my collection, on top of it being Lizzie. So it just, I saw it and everybody, all of my like personal friends were sending it to me. Anybody that knows me knows I love Lizzie McGuire and Hilary Duff, so everybody was sending it to me. Um... I just picked it up and I am so happy that I did. It makes me smile every time I use it. And that's what this whole video is about is just things that make me smile <laughs> in the midst of a pandemic. So the next one is not a specific product. Um, I mean, it kind of is really the star of the show um, has been two products specifically, but the brand Phytosurgeons, I they were my one of the last videos that I posted. Phytosurgeons is another Canadian beauty brand that is um like clean beauty and they're just so cool. I talked I talked about them a lot in the video that I posted using these products, but um the spectral shine in the shade mirrored moonlight is such a wonderful highlight. I just love their products. I love supporting them. I think they're a great company and every time I reach for these I just get that like little like pang of like not butterflies like you know you know when you say like oh I have like butterflies um you know it, like we're thinking like you're thinking like you're on a first date and you have like butterflies I'm not gonna say that I get like butterflies from using these I'm gonna say I get like fireflies just like a little like something you know they're just ugh. I love using these products they're incredible um so specifically the spectral shine in the shade mirrored moonlight and then i've really been loving the skin spark blush in the shade fume they're incredible so if you want more information about um phytosurgeons and the colors that i chose i have a video posted and i'll link that as well i guess 
So I think that's everything for like beauty related stuff. So um, no, one more. Well, it's beauty, but it's not, but it is. Um, <laughs> Finding Ferdinand and the Flower Bodega sent over their Mother's Day collaboration. And I posted like an unboxing and swatched the shades, but it comes with this dried flower arrangement. And this has been living in my kitchen or living in my uh, living room since I got it. And it's just so beautiful. These are real flowers, but they're dried and it's gorgeous. I just love having it on my coffee table. I come home every day and I'm like stoked to see it. And I also like knock on wood. Um, The cat hasn't messed it up, which is great. So that's a fun one. And that's beauty related because it's Finding Ferdinand, which I love them. If you don't know, they're a custom lipstick company. You can customize your own shades or choose from any of the shades that they already have. But I chat with their team regularly. They chat with me. They're incredible. I love Finding Ferdinand. They're another small business. I think every like makeup, no, not every, but like I featured a lot of smaller companies in my favorites. And that's because when I can, when I know that my dollars are going to, you know, a team of 10 people or a team of two people or one person in the case of Stark, you know, I just really feel like I'm voting with my dollars in a way that is just natural. You know, they're great products and I'm supporting companies that would support me, you know, and a lot of them have, they've sent things, they've talked to me. They're just, I really enjoy using them. And anytime that somebody, anytime that I'm gifted a product or am sent a product, which I, I'm a small creator, I'm like a micro influencer, I guess. I don't know. That's just what I have, like what I've been told. It's super weird, like getting into this and like getting as far in as I am now. And I have to start doing things that I never like thought about. Like how would I go about contacting a brand or if a brand reaches out to me, like how do I kind of market myself? But I pride myself on being somebody who shows real products. You know what I mean? Um, I, you know, with the case of the Boonie Dune ones, these are very expensive. This I want to say is like, you get 35 and I want to say it's like $35, which that's kind of a lot for something that you're only going to get 35 uses out of. But I feel so good about supporting the company. And I'm honest with myself. Like I don't use this every day or even every other day. This is a special treat when I want my skin to feel good. But these companies are just really incredible. And, you know, if I can give a smaller company a voice on a platform, then I'm really happy to do that. So, um... Yeah, that was a bit of a tangent, but the next favorite um, are these masks, actually. So we're still masking, um, even though I'm fully vaccinated, but the Adidas masks are so comfortable. Um, they come in a three pack, and this has primarily been what I'm wearing at work. I'm actually wearing an Adidas shirt today, so I guess I'm like all Adidas out, but um, I've just really been loving these they're so incredibly comfortable and I want to say it was like 18 bucks for a three pack so not ridiculously expensive um yeah I've really been enjoying them so the next favorite and this is a new one um I've only burned it once but it's a candle from Target and it's the sparkling yuzu from Opal House and I typically don't love like a Target candle I get a lot of candles from like local companies or like boutique companies. Um, it's just a way that I like to support them. But this one, I was told by a like local, like a, by a woman that I follow who is like an influencer from Buffalo. Um, she's really cool. She posts a lot of like style and interior design, but um, this is a dupe for um, Volcano which is like the anthropology smell. Um, and I love that candle in a very specific way. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite. I'm not even gonna, say, like if I was making like a top 10 candles, it's probably not even in the top 10, but I know it when I smell it and I love it, but it's so expensive. Like the volcano candles I wanna say are like 30 bucks, which is a lot for a candle. Um, especially a smell that's not in my like, top 10. Again, I really like it, but this is a scent that I like burning like in the kitchen or in the bathroom. 
And those are two places that I'm not going to spend a lot of money to fragrance. So every once in a while I'll pick up a Volcano Candle, but when I found out that the Sparkling Yuzu one is $10, I had to at least try it. And I'm so thankful I did. I wish there was Smell-O-Vision um, because this smells almost exactly like Volcano. Volcano is a little bit richer than this and it has like a ton more scent throw, but to burn this in my living room or in my bathroom or in, you know, wherever in my kitchen, it, you know, I'm not gonna say it stinks up the place. Like it definitely fragrances the room. The scent throw was enough. And for a $10 candle, that's all I can ask. But especially because it smells so similar to Volcano, I'm really, I've really been enjoying it. And I just wanted to kind of share that with you. So yeah, if you're looking for a $10 candle, it's a great one. I can't, can't speak highly enough. We're really getting there. I have two more things to share. And the next, they're actually both like, like a collection of things, not just a specific one. But um, I mentioned that we've been watching a lot of Studio Ghibli movies in um, either one of my, like I think one of my videos, I recorded it right before this. I don't know what's going on, but my boyfriend and I have been watching a ton of Studio Ghibli movies. And uh, they're just so wonderful. Um, I've been itching to kind of get back into anime um, and we've been watching Sailor Moon. Um, and I just, I think we watched Mary and the Witch's Flower on Netflix. And then the movies are impossible to find. If it's not on Netflix, there's only like one or two on Netflix. You have to like buy them from Amazon. You can't even rent them. So a couple times I've like been to Target and I just picked up one. So I picked up my neighbor Totoro. Um, and then I picked up Kiki's Delivery Service because my Kiki's Delivery Service was my favorite growing up. And then I'd never seen my neighbor Totoro. Um... And then I, you know, picked it up and everybody was raving about it. So yeah, I'm just really happy to have these in my collection. Um, my boyfriend and I watched both of them. We've watched like three or four. We watched Spirited Away. Um, and then, like I said, Mary and the Witch's Flower. But these have just been so comforting. I think these two specifically because they really are kind of slice of life. Um, I, not like exactly <laughs> like Kiki's a witch and like flies on a broom. Um... And then my neighbor Totoro, um, you know, the little carrot, like the like little figure, I mean, not little, he's huge, but has like a cat bus. I, I don't want to give them away, but just, I, I even if it's not Studio Ghibli, I guess like watch movies that you loved when you were a kid. It's just really kind of been making me feel good and a good form of escapism. Um, my boyfriend makes popcorn really well. I'm not a big popcorn fan, but he makes homemade popcorn and it's divine. So like on a Sunday afternoon, we just each had like a big bowl of popcorn and watched Kiki's Delivery Service and it just felt so nice and warm and comforting. So um, I guess the last one, and it's kind of funny because it's like the exact opposite of like warm, cozy, like childhood animated movies um are these books which I guess like I when you upload to YouTube it asks you if your like content is for people under 18 or not and you can kind of click so like I guess if you're not 18 like bye <laughs> you're gold I love you <laughs> um but these are adult romance books um and what drew me come on just like Look at that. <laughs> like, I was at Barnes & Noble just looking for a fun little read. Um, I've been, I'd kind of fallen out of reading a ton. I mean, I, I read about two books a month on average, which I guess is like a lot for, you know, some people don't read at all. So I pride myself on reading like two books a month, but I had really been slacking. I'd been listening to a ton of audiobooks and not actually reading. And when I do that, I not, I had been listening to a ton of audiobooks and not physically reading copies of books that I own. And when that happens, I tend to pick up like a cheesy, trashy, pulp back book that I can like really just sink my teeth into and dive in and read it in two days and I was just kind of looking in like the romance section 
and I know like Bridgerton was based on books. So I kind of looked that looked into that. Um, I actually worked at Barnes and Noble for like four years forever ago. I worked in the cafe, but I'm pretty familiar with the way that the book floor works. So I was just looking for like Regency romancy kind of books. And this cover jumped right out at me because like, hello, two boys holding each other. I love that. Basically, the way that I am with like romance novels is they are the epitome of a guilty pleasure. And I don't even necessarily read them like for smut or, you know, spicy activity. Um, if they're in a book, I'm not somebody that like is going to gasp and like close the book and never read it. I'm not super prudish with my reading. But I don't actively seek out like, you know, like the, the nasty in books. Um, if it's in there, it's fine. If not, okay as long as like the storyline is good and typically with romance novels if they're lgbtq based i'm already invested like my heart just loves that um one that was really good was red white and royal blue i should i should do like a collection of like lgbtq romance books that i love but anyway this jumped out to me and they were 5.99 so i bought the first two and I use Goodreads, so I looked this up and there was a ton of reviews about how well it was written and how good these books are. I'd never heard of Kat Sebastian, but she had like, I think she has like three series of like specifically gay romance novels. And this one is the, I think it's the Sedgwick series. Um, but this one is about a like ship's captain and a vicar who fall in love and whatnot. So I read this over the course of like a week. I haven't started the second one, but I'm going to. Um, and I'm reading it, reading it, reading it. And it's like set in like England, it, like in, in like a like nondescript, like older time. So I don't know if it's quite Regency, but it's probably that like era. So I'm reading it and there's this like ship captain who's like kind of a jerk and then this like vicar who helps take care of his kids because he's a widow and the vicar is like engaged to his like childhood best friend, whatever. And they wind up like flirting and I'm like, okay, this is super good. I'm invested. I'm like 50, 60 pages in and it's right at the tipping point. Like, I don't know if it's going to be like spicy, you know what I mean? Or if it's going to be like very puritanical they like flirt a little and have like gentle exchanges and then like at the end in the sunset they share a kiss like a la nicholas sparks but like nicholas sparks but make it gay you know what i mean because like i love that too um so i'm reading and then about 60 to 70 pages in it got spicy there was um there was some physical activity. Um, so I do just stipulate, um, please, you know, use your best judgment. If something like that is going to bother you, maybe don't read these. Um, if you're a younger reader, do not read these. They're meant for adults. That being said, you can buy these at Barnes and Noble. There's nothing in it that I don't think you wouldn't see on HBO. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a role model. I'm just here to talk about beautiful things and stuff that makes me smile in the middle of a pandemic. So, um, but the Cat Sebastian romance novels, I've read the first one and I'm going to start the second one. So, yeah, um, I've been loving these. They're a ton of fun. If you have any book recommendations, please let me know. If you have like any favorite recommendations, just put them in the comments. Let me know things that you're loving, the things that are making you smile in the time of a pandemic. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to chat with me. I love it. But I'll try to link everything in the description. And thank you so much for hanging out. Um, 
I hope that this was a good supplement to my empties videos. Like I said, I just didn't quite feel like I had enough to come on here and really talk to you about the things that I've used up and my feelings on them. So I hope this does its job at replacing it for now. But thank you so much for coming to hang out. I appreciate it. Um, I hope that you're all taking wonderful care of yourselves. I hope that you're doing things that make you smile. And most importantly, I hope that at the end of the day, with everything going on in the world, that you remember that you're made of gold. So until next time.